right? Some of the graphs? Because of that, um, when he was stabbed on the side, the water came out. When he was submerged in blood in the water. That's a good answer, but that's not the significance of it. Okay. Those two words. This is the significance of that. Let's say one or two drops of water into that wine, a glass full of wine. After that, the, the drop of water gets plunged into that wine. Can you still distinguish the water from the wine? No. This absolute complete union. Full assimilation. That's what happens in reality. That's what should happen ideally after you eat the body and drink the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are no longer distinguishable from Christ. That's the significance of that drop of water that gets plunged into that wine. Faith, trust, experience, union. So we become like Jesus. Yeah. Whereas what Peter says, we become partakers of the divine nature of God. And we meditated on, I am with you always, book of Matthew says, right? I am with you always. You know why? Through here. For as long as you participate in the Mass, what else could be a greater, closer union than eating the blood, eating the body, and drinking the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ? Remember, the Mass is a bloodless representation of Calvary. That's what it is. That's what mask is. There's no blood involved. Because nobody gets, gets lashed. Nobody gets nailed. We don't crucify Jesus again and again. But the one was the priest blesses the chalice, doesn't it become blood? Or yeah. The the term, we say it's the blood of Christ. The, the term for that is transubstantiation. Yeah. We will talk about it. Uh, right. yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll go there. Okay? So that summarizes Sunday to Sunday. Let's come back to this. Now we will ponder upon the Trinity. The first thing we will do is to explore the teaching on the Trinity. This is apart from what I taught you uh, last Saturday in the workshop. In the workshop, I gave you <clears throat> whatever it is that could be understood for as far as the mystery of the Holy Trinity is. This fine? Okay. We'll do magic. mystery to you? I have heard a catechist, a catechist, but I, was, I wasn't uh, doing Bible studies yet. A catechist said, well, it's a mystery, so we cannot explain it.
I'll be the first to concede. No man can fully explain to you the mystery of the most holy trinity 100%. No more. That's why it's a mystery. But we can know some things about it. But not everything. Are you still at 253? Yes. Paragraph 253? Three gods, not three gods, but one God. Three persons, consubstantial trinity. See? The divine persons do not share. Because if they share, that means one third, one third, one third. That's not a good thing. No. They do not share. Each one, each person, although they're distinct, but each one possesses the full divine nature. Each one. No sharing. Later on, I will, I, I, like, I like the, the analogy, but later on I will talk, that's going to be the last thing I will talk to you about, this. Okay, the word trinity, or triune, triune or trinity, they're the same. Literally means three one. In Greek, the term is triunus, triunus. Tri means three, like Tricycle, triplet, so three. So tri, unus means one. That's why we get university. Uni means one. Uni, uni means one. Now, so actually the term is triunity. So what they did is this word is actually a conflation of triunity. So they term they coined the word trinity. Who coined the word trinity? The Catholic Church. The Catholic Church did. Literally it means three oneness of God. Can you I like this? This is not in the workshop. Trinity or triunity means three oneness of God. That makes sense to you? If not, I encourage you to watch the YouTube of, of uh, last Saturday's workshop. Now, is this teaching of, on the Trinity in the Bible? Oh yes, it is in the Bible. Let's see. Genesis 1.26. You know what this is? Genesis 1.26 talks about, let us create man in our image. That's what this is. In our image. Let us create. In our image. Why did you use a four for? Because it's three one is a five. You just answered a question for me too. Wow. <laughs> no, no, really. Yeah. Somebody told me God had help. And the angels helped him. Uh-uh. Oh. Three five. distinct persons? Yeah. That's what he was talking about. Three persons, one time. Thank you for that answer. <laughs> oh, oh, this is new again. Elohim. Elohim is a Hebrew word for God. This is the name of God. I know I wrote it. This is the name of God. Now, but because this name is so holy, this name is so sacred, what do you want? Elohim. The other one is Adonai. 
Have you heard of those words, those names? Adonai. Adonai is the word that God uses, that the Hebrews use to pertain to God. Because they cannot pronounce this name, it is so sacred. It is so sacred they cannot pronounce the name. So they coined two words, Adonai, meaning Lord, or this word, Elohim. Grammatically, the word Elohim means God's plural. If you, if, you, if you happen to know Hebrew, you will realize that Elohim is plural. It means God's. Okay, but they don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in, in, in no, they don't believe in the Trinity. They, they say only one God. Right. But we believe in one God too. Yeah, but why would they write it like that? Precisely. Precisely. It's plural. Now, some people, some Jews, are able to get out of it by saying, no, that's the Hebrew way of saying holy, very super duper holy. Yeah. That contradicts what it means. Which, you know. <laughs> so again, this is a one, you can say an illustration of the three oneness of God. God is one, yet He is three. <laughs> I put it here. God is one, yet He is three. Genesis 18. When Abraham, oh, sorry, Abraham, when Abraham was talking to God, this name was uttered. I am that I am. Now, because this could not be pronounced, the, the early people added uh, vowels. So that's the thing about the Hebrew word, they're all consonants. Did you know that? There are no vowels in the Hebrew language, it's all consonants. So they put Yahweh. Yahweh. But that is just a means so we could pronounce the name. But the Pope, Pope Benedict XVI says, we should refrain from using, uttering this name uh, unnecessarily. Great. 